Concerns over academic integrity are not new. However, our current shift to a predominantly online teaching culture has increased faculty questions about how to minimize cheating and plagiarism. In this quick presentation, we'll look at a three-pronged approach to cultivating academic integrity among our students. In order to accurately address academic dishonesty, we first need to understand why students cheat. Sadly, the attention this topic receives in the media would lead us to believe that most students cheat. However, research on the topic suggests that most students don't cheat, at least not intentionally. And for those who do cheat, it usually occurs because students are unfamiliar with what constitutes cheating, or they're feeling time pressures to complete an assignment, or they don't want to risk failing at a high stakes assessment. Thankfully, we can address these challenges fairly easily through some good course design and facilitation skills. This three-pronged approach is aimed at addressing the reasons behind academic dishonesty. For the students who inadvertently cheat because they don't know an action was considered cheating, teaching them about the topic will help increase their understanding. To address time pressures and high stakes failure stresses, we can adjust our course designs. Finally, to discourage random or casual cheating, we can include various deterrence options such as proctored exams. I think this approach strikes a nice balance between the overly optimistic and overly pessimistic views of students. Yes, it does lean more towards an optimistic view, but I think the research supports this. We've all been in education for a while, so we know what we mean when we say things like don't cheat or don't plagiarize. However, students who are new to academia might not know these things. Added to that is the problem that some faculty consider certain actions to be cheating while others do not. For example, in my classes, I allow reuse of one's own work in an assignment, but I know many faculty who would consider that cheating. So, how do we minimize this type of possibly inadvertent cheating? We educate our students. We teach them our definition of cheating and the universities, and we explain why cheating is not the best option for learning. Ideally, each course will have a resource that includes a clear definition of what constitutes cheating and plagiarism with examples. It should also include any measures being taken in the course to detect cheating and any university policies related to academic dishonesty and what happens if you're caught cheating. Two other significant reasons for cheating and plagiarism are time pressures and high stakes assessment stress. These days, students have a lot going on. Most of them work or have family obligations in addition to their school obligations. That means they experience a lot of time pressures. In addition, many of them haven't yet developed good time management strategies. Together, those things lead to an increase in the likelihood a student will cheat in order to get an assignment completed on time. Thankfully, we can overcome these challenges with some careful course design options. First and foremost, of course, you could allow late assignments within reason. Beyond that, we could build a system of reminders of assignments or provide a learning activity up at the beginning of the course that encourage your students to set their own reminders. I like to do both, but I definitely do create assignments that help students learn how to plan and organize their own time and their learning and set their own reminders. I want to help them become more self-directed learners. Next, we can create scaffolded assignments. For example, if students are going to have to do a big term paper or a big project for the end of the course, 
you could break that activity down into multiple uh, activities. You could have them first submit a brief description of the paper or project that they're planning on doing. Then you could have them submit an annotated bibliography, then an outline, and then a draft version, and then a final version of that paper or project. Not only does this address the time challenges mentioned, it also discourages plagiarism and it teaches them to set goals and manage their time more wisely. Another thing you can do with course design is to include more quiz practice opportunities and make sure that the feedback from those quiz questions directs the students to specific places in the readings or lectures where they can review the things that they got wrong. More practice with the concept leads to better learning and with the practice comes a reduce or a reduction of the stress of the midterms and finals. They'll feel ready because they've had more practice. Finally, writing better quiz questions is critical. You need to focus more on questions that are more about critical thinking than rote memorization. And if you have more quiz questions so that they can be randomized during the exams, then those are two really good development strategies for minimizing that potential to cheat, uh, you know, to pass out the, the exam answers beforehand or get your hands on a copy of them and then ch and cheat. The third prong of our approach to cultivating academic honesty is more about deterrence through the use of surveillance measures such as proctored exams and plagiarism detectors. The most important thing to remember about these measures is that you should inform your students that they are happening in the class. Not only is this the more ethical choice, but it also serves to amplify the deterrence effect. Some universities have invested in proctored exam services these typically involve either going to a specified location to check in with a valid ID and take an exam while a proctor is present, or in our current environment, logging into an online service that requires identification and then taking an exam digitally while a webcam and other software tracks your actions on the computer and in the room around you. Each university or college will have their own process in place to schedule exams using this method. Universities and colleges also invest in plagiarism detection software like Insight and Turnitin. Of course, there are also free online services that individual faculty can use, such as DupliChecker and CopyLeaks. While faculty can easily use plagiarism detectors, I actually recommend that they teach students how to use them themselves. Uh, in in, and in addition, they should teach them why citing sources uh, in their papers is an excellent idea. So I recommend these things because mostly I appreciate a teaching approach more than a policing approach. However, an equally strong reason is related to workload management. Plagiarism detectors and proctored exams typically add a, an extra level of work for faculty. So helping the students figure out how to, you know, check their own papers, for example, will reduce faculty workload in addition to teaching the students better skills. In summary, while most students don't cheat, those that do usually do so for reasons such as a lack of knowledge about what counts as cheating and plagiarism, time pressures, and high stakes assessment stresses. To cultivate a climate of academic honesty, a three-pronged approach that focuses on teaching to reduce inadvertent cheating and course design strategies to minimize the stress that might lead to cheating, as well as deterrence measures are the best approach.
Here are some resources to continue your exploration of this topic. In addition, the MIT Student Handbook is an excellent example of a resource that can be used in your courses. Thank you.